Welcome to Garza. This is Will Sanchez. My very special guest today is John Hendwood. He is the founder of The Run Studio, a fitness studio that's on treadmills. He is also the founder and coach for the Hedwood Hounds. I am honored to have John as a guest. Thanks very much for inviting me, Will. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure. John, let's get started by introducing yourself to our audience. Yeah, sure. For example, where were you born? And tell us a little bit about your childhood. So I was born in New Zealand. I was actually born at the bottom of the North Island in Wellington, which is our capital. I was only there for a year, and then we moved up uh, four hours up north in Hamilton. And I lived there for 20 years. We moved onto a farm, actually. So I was on a farm for 20 years. We have a like a cattle farm there, and uh, it was more of a hobby farm. But uh, you know, growing up like that, that's kind of kind of made me uh, kind of run everywhere around the farm, and uh, you know, and, and you grow up on a tougher tougher life, you know, where you're getting out and feeding out at five, six in the morning, five, five thirty, where in terms of feeding out, meaning feeding out the hay, you know, you're doing all sorts of farm chores uh -huh, that we uh -huh. would do when we were young before we'd go off to our country school. I think the whole school had a hundred people in it. Did and, you run to school? <laughs> um, I biked and I ran to school a couple of times, okay. yeah, but it's, it was about five or six k's to school and back. Were you athletically inclined in high school? I, yeah, I was. I mean, I was always, I shot up, I was 6'5", I was even skinnier than I am now. Um, I just had a lot of growing, a lot of st strength work. I had a lot of natural ability through, I played soccer, cricket, um, you know, I mean, uh, and then I would run and do well in cross countries, second or third, the odd first, against people that would maybe train a little bit, oh, and I would just do okay. it for fun. Well, now, um, you were in the Olympics for 2004, so how did you, who discovered you that you were Olympic material? I, you know what, I always thought I would get there, even even when I was well behind, I just thought, you know, I can do that. I had really awesome supportive parents, and that's a big thing to mm -hmm. get there, that's that you're halfway. And I knew that, I, but I couldn't add too much too soon, which is really important when you're 6'5 and skinny, and you're just developing, you gotta let your bones grow and your muscles grow, and then until you reach a maturity where you can really, you know, um, like, do a little bit more. No, you were self-taught. Dad helped me out at first, and then I was more. Um, then I started to do. I had. A, I grabbed a coach, uh, Kevin Ross, for a while, um, and till I was about 23. And then Graham Tattersall, awesome. He coached me um, right through. And then I more had advisors, and I was doing my own thing. Yeah. Um, like um, even for the Olympic Games, I was kind of self-coached. Um, I had Graham there up to maybe two years beforehand. Uh -huh. well, how did you get selected to, for the Olympics? Um, I had to run a really fast time. <laughs> just because we're a small country, it doesn't mean they just t take the top three. So we, uh, which some people might think, but um, you know, the IAAF standard I had to do, which is I had to do a 27 minutes, 45 seconds, 10K on the track. And um, no, it was exciting. I, I was always there, and I actually said to myself, "I'm going to run 27:45 today," and it would hit it right on. Uh -huh. You know, so um, yeah, an athlete really knows their body really well, and okay. they, they know when they're kind of ready. I qualified with that time. I got under the A standard, and then uh, yeah, and then it was about training for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. So that was maybe four or five months before the before the. Okay, event. that was in Athens, I believe. That was in Athens in 2004. Okay, that's a big travel for you. Yeah, well, I was already gone to Colorado to qualify, so I left. To, I was doing some altitude training in Boulder there. Okay. Um, and so I was there for three months doing that, and then I was moving, joining the New Zealand team. Um, I traveled through New York, actually visiting a friend, and that's how I ended up here. That's how I ended up. I played around in New York. It was like, wow, this is awesome. Uh -huh. I didn't have a lot going on after the Olympics, so I came back to visit and kind of shopped around and saw the running community, met Mary Wittenberg, and thought, wow, there's a real opportunity here, and I really like it. So I might, after the Olympics, I might stay. Well, you had to, of course, get an athlete's visa uh -huh. and, and apply for one of those. Oh, interesting. I've um, never heard of an athlete's visa. Yeah, it's basically like a um, professional. It doesn't have to be running. Uh -huh. It's um, it's a you know you, you apply, and I think it's like a five-year term, and you can extend it for ten years. Uh -huh. And I had to do that first. I, I see. Um, so you're a uh, New Zealander. Yeah. They yeah. call it kiwis. Kiwis. Why is it called kiwi, John? Um, well, it's actually the bird. The kiwi bird. Yeah, oh. a lot of people think it's the fruit. Uh -huh. In fact, we even don't call the kiwi the kiwi fruit. We call it, sorry, yeah, we don't call it kiwi fruit. We call it kiwi fruit in like one, one word. One word. Uh -huh. 
there must have been some introduction like stuff up there when you yeah. we introduced the fruit to America maybe someone put it like kiwi fruit because all the Americans <laughs> call it kiwis and or they there was some stuff up there somewhere but kiwis were named after the bird which yeah. is a nocturnal bird long beat can't fly getting That's... towards extinction we do protect them yeah how well did you do in that uh, 10K? Well, the Olympics wasn't the best experience for me. I had, I mean, it was great to get there, but in the in the final of the 10K, I was, I I had gone about eight or nine laps. What had happened is I had some Achilles issues, which was fine because I ha I have it strapped up. I pronate a lot, and um, basically the tape it, when it was so hot and so muggy. As soon as I started warming up, the tape just ripped off, oh. and it was a tape that kind of it was a J strap. It would hold my foot up from over pronating and over stressing the Achilles. Yeah, yeah. So it worked in my track session, it works really well. And then just at 10.45 night, the Olympic final, the tape just came straight off. I knew I was in trouble straight away. So I was running in pain from the get-go. Oh, God. And unfortunately, it ended up being the first race that I've actually ever pulled out of in a track race. The race was just not so good, but it still ended up being the Olympics, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. You're always an Olympian. I was, and I was ranked, I think, 15th in the final out of the 25s on, on time. So. I was, I deserved to be there and I was happy with that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so you decided to come to New York on that five-year visa, met Mary Wittenberg. Yeah. So did you set up shop as a coach or what was well, your I work? came here as, a, as an athlete, so I was making money um, basically just running, running as an athlete. And, um, you know, it, it was, uh, I mean, I, I, I competed for New York Athletic Club and they would fly me around the country, half marathons, they would support me, I'd be wearing their singlet, and you know, I'd win a thousand bucks here, a thousand bucks there, fifteen hundred bucks there, I'm just uh, winning money to keep, and, and, wow, and that's, that doesn't sound a whole like a lot, that sounds like it barely covers your yeah, transportation and dodging. Oh, exactly, so I was doing, you know, some coaching as well, and started to do some coaching and then develop my own running team. And it kind of went from from there. Henwood Towns was born. How long ago was Henwood Towns born? 2006, 2007. Yeah, yeah something wow. like that. Seven, and, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. It's, and I was coaching, actually, you know what? 2000, might have even been 2008. 2006, I was doing some coaching. And I was just coaching people from all the team, lots yeah. of different teams. Yeah. Uh, moving Comfort at the time, I had some really good runners from there. I had a few NIAC runners. Um, but then eventually, you know, I was never going to compete with NIAC because they have a big building and a pool and everything else for a membership. You know, they're not going to come running right. over to my team. Yeah. But, but others would come over and, and start wanting to form a team and, and, and go from there. I still competed for NIAC for a while until everyone was giving me the shove to come their way. And I, I, my performances started to go down a little bit in, in NIAC as yeah. I was getting older. And then I came and joined Henwood Towns. You started it. Yeah. And it's named after you. Yeah, yeah, so exactly. You joined your own so club. So I joined my own team. <laughs> Runners came along and, uh, you know, I got a couple of girls to the Olympic trials, uh, Kelly Chin um, and Carolyn um, Lafrac. Uh, both went to the Olympic trials and Carolyn was the runner of the year that year, ran in 2 hours and 37 minutes. Um, and that was actually in 2011. Um, under, so you would have run of the that. year for road runners for 2012 or 2013? Yeah, for your age think, group? yeah, exactly. Runner of the year each year. I was age group runner of the year. Yeah. She was actually full runner of oh, the year. Oh, okay, that's a big deal. Yeah, big, big deal. exactly. I don't know if road runners does any more 10Ks, but there were a couple of 10Ks where you really excel at road runners. Yeah, there were a couple of the healthy kidney. I was, I think, seventh or eighth, a big international yeah. event, ran yeah. just over 29, maybe 29, 20 or something okay. like that. Um, and uh, but road running is, uh, but it was more the the New York Marathon in 2005, you know, rather than the park races, which yeah. I kind of use for training. Uh -huh. um, but the New York Marathon in 2005, I was 13th place. 13th. Yeah, uh, that's excellent. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that was my second marathon. The second marathon, yeah. almost made up for the Olympics. Uh, that going yeah, well. Yeah, just doing that was really awesome. And that was, what was your time for 13th place? 2:15. 20 years ago, that would have won. <laughs> it's true, definitely. <laughs> At some point, you made the news because all of a sudden Mary Kane, you know, this, this phenom teenager is taking the, the racing world by storm. She's training with Alberto Salazar. And then all of a sudden you're involved. Yeah. Well, tell us about Mary and how did that happen? Well, basically Alberto contacted New York Roadrunners and they sent Alberto a bunch of CVs, um, I think five CVs. And um, Alberto decided to go with me 
just straight up because I've been there and done that at that level, the Olympic level, to know, yeah. you know, how she's feeling, or what what to tweak, um, and, and I think it's worked really well. Well, um, obviously she met you, you she know, met make me. sure it was sympathetic. Yeah, I think it must have I mean, hit it off. Yeah, I mean, geez, uh, the first time I met her, well, I went to the track where it was, um, I think it was in um, Van Cortland, there's a track there, watched her do the 400s, and it was automatically, you know, like even, you just know she's going to the Olympics. It's just, it's, it's amazing. She's just, unless something goes wrong, just beautiful stride, feet go straight ahead, just uh, ease of running like 70 second 400s. And she how old is she now? Well, she's just turned 19 now. 19. Oh, okay. And yeah. this is, I guess it was 16, 17 when you had her? Uh, it's just, yes, yeah, 16. But that must this be an awesome responsibility. Now, have you had siblings yourself, or? No, I haven't. No. So this is like having a sister that... Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, hey, I've, been, I've, been asked, I've been asked by my father a few times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not too bad either, you know, yeah, to yeah. have a, a daughter like that. Yeah, to have Mary Kane. Brother, like, I do say yes. No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, that must be a wonderful relationship. I mean, there's got to be a lot of trust. There is. And it's very, I'm definitely there mentally for her. You know, it's it's hard. There's a lot of pressure on a 16-year-old. Um, she has fantastic days and she has not the best of days because she's still growing, she's still developing. And she had to learn that not every day is a good day. Um, you know, when she was being coached by someone else, every day kind of was a good day. It's because she really didn't have much of a base. So every time she'd go out, she would kind of kick, you know, kill it. But when you put some base in there um, and you give her some harder training, then she has to realize that the body's got to recover from that. Um, so yeah, there's, yeah, she, 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 she learned. And, yeah, yeah. and she, you know, she's definitely um, someone who's a, a, a perfectionist and that's why she's so good at whatever, yeah. whatever she does, she's really good at. Cool. Um, but then on the other side of that, we need to get her to um, explore imperfection in yeah. workouts, yeah, you know, yeah. and to say, well, this is, and give her reason um, to why the workout wasn't good today. Okay. And I'd give her a reason. I'd always have a reason for okay. it. And, and you know what it is. Okay. Um, it could be uh, uh, studying. She was up studying two nights ago the whole night. Yeah, it could yeah. be anything. Yeah. But I'll, we'll figure it out. And that's my job to figure it out, talk yeah. about it with Alberto. And, and he totally agrees. And we talk to her and she's good. She's like, that makes sense. Yeah. Bang. Yeah. And that's how mature she is, even at 16. 16. Now she's 19. What is she doing now? She's in college now um, at Portland um, with Alberto. Um, I actually just, she's back home for a couple of weeks. I actually just ran with her yesterday. Ran in the park, ran with her yesterday and just had a, had a chat about her running and stuff. Okay, and cool. um, yeah, she's looking forward to, to getting into a, the, into the a, Olympics now. Is she going to try for, it's the Olympics 2016? Is that Rio? Um, yeah, 20, 2016. Yeah, so, so she's that's, gonna, uh, you think oh, she's yeah, on track? She's, she's, she's on there. She's, um, a couple of little races haven't quite gone her way oh, yet, but we're, right. you know, we're all tweaking that. But she it's runs Mary against 26-year-olds, 27-year-olds, yeah. a lot of people who experience it. She still comes in the top five, you know, whatever. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, yeah, yeah. All oh, right. And she's got a, no, like every professional, every Olympian, every gold medalist has finished last before. That's in any right. you got to, you got to explore your, you, you, you just got to tweak things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's still and, a star. And of course, you the other runners in your team are probably very excited for you to have, oh, you know, yeah. Barry and oh, very. And they, you probably they love bring me back, here. you know, good tips on uh, their running and their, the way you coach them. Totally. And Alberto always has great little tips and a few that I've used, can use from runners and, and, uh, I even think he learned something, you know what I mean? <laughs> That'd be good, um, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just we feed off each other well. And Excellent. we're Excellent. all about getting the best out of the athlete. So. Excellent. But now let's talk about the run. You yeah, know, sure. This is something new. you got great shirts. I'm yeah. wearing it. I was there the other day checking it out. Mm -hmm. So, so you had a great class. It, they call it the, the Shaper. Yeah. So let's talk about it. What is the run? It was a few years ago where I'm thinking there are so many people in New York road runners, so many people that run in the park, and not enough people do like quality training and speed work. And um, you know, 85, 90% of these people kind of just want to finish the race, and they do training programs to just finish the race. So they don't change it up. I'm sure they would enjoy doing kind of speed work if they could run with people to do it. But then at the same time, they don't like 
like sometimes the conditions it's too hot it's too dark or too cold and all they're getting left behind in groups and that's where I'm thinking how do I bring it would be great to have everyone in the same room in the room where you could bring people together no one's finishing last of all different paces in controlled conditions not too hot it's not dark five in the morning it's not dark eight at night after work New Yorkers work crazy hours obviously and really enjoy it and I and I thought you know Soul Cycle Flywheel, like Soul Cycle started, I think 2005, uh, 2006. And people love, it was all about a community. They got the best instructors, best music to make those bikes look and feel much less painless, you mm -hmm. know, really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking, was this would really work with running. Mm -hmm. Get them in, really to enjoy running, where you have an awesome instructor, a coach, but like my brain inside the treadmill somehow all these coaching programs yeah, yeah. that would work in an algorithm and then just great music all about the music mm -hmm. doing workouts tailored for 5k marathon whatever just strength really mm -hmm. i mean all these whether you're doing a 5k marathon 10k all the workouts are going to be really going to help you mm -hmm. because what people don't really know is that even a mile is a strength is a strength they think it's speed yeah i think this this mentality of a short distance like 5k is about speed or a mile is about speed a mile is about 80 percent strength mm -hmm. so really all these workouts are going to really help with all of them you know you do more tempo work for a marathon mm -hmm. or a half marathon but um and i just thought how could we do it and give them a crazy workout where they learn a lot they enjoy the workout and then they finish and just go wow i can't believe i just did that yeah and that's what the instructor's there to do that's what the music's there to do where they can just finish they see their results um they can go back and look at their results on the uh, profile and it's like wow i can't believe i did that that was awesome Start to run. And the, the way I did it is just from all my coaching experience, based on someone's normal running pace, which is a pace that someone does for say 50 minutes just going for a run, relaxed, moderate pace, there's an algorithm in my head that goes off, well you should be able to do this for 5k, this for 10k, this should be around your marathon time, these for 1k repeats, these for mile repeats, mm -hmm. and I've put these little paces depending on their normal running pace into an algorithm into the treadmill, into techno gym treadmills which are, are really, they're the only cloud based system that actually um, treadmills that actually we can do this with. Techno gym. Techno gym. Yeah, yeah, I, they're, I, they're getting I, popular. They're big in the hotels. They're uh, New York Sports Club. I mean, they're, they're getting pretty, pretty I, big. I've been up. down to their showroom in Soho. Yeah. It's a, it's a high end Italian. Yeah, Italian. But um, but those machines are very doable, I guess, just to uh, add to it, because recently somebody did a 12 hour. World record. It was yeah. at a techno gym. Chris, I Chris think Solis. 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 Yeah. The record was broken recently. Yeah. Okay. But when he did the twelve-hour, yeah. he was on. I said, "What kind of machine could last that long?" Oh, we'll get Chris it back in and techno it, gym. Yeah, big, sturdy, awesome treadmills. Really good. We put an algorithm in there with a third-party guy, um, and the treadmills just do their thing: faster, slower, up and down, without you touching anything. You can uh, tweak it if you're out of your perceived exertion. That's um, very interesting. It's uh, it's a uh, it's a high tech in the sense that you could program it. I mean, uh, I, I go to Equinox and they have Woodways and they're not programmable. Yep. So I did the Shaper and I was uh, first time, I, I did it once before and at, and you mentioned the normal pace rate and I, and I it was too high for me at that the first time. Yep. But what's interesting, if you have knobs, so if the pace is too low, you can tweak it and lower it. You can it. tweak it, tweak it. What was interesting, it has different levels. When it went to the next level, it remembered the old one. It said, okay, that was just a one-time thing, which was really cool. Yeah. No, you can change the pace. What we're really pushing and we're, you know, we get obviously we've only been open a few weeks and we really are pushing the instructor to really find their pace and uh, talk about how they're going to find their pace. Because if it's a little low, they get an easy workout. If it's a little high, they get a they get a um, a harder workout. Yeah. But in general, I would say 95% of the time they're pretty bang on. Yeah. And the paces are great, and they work really well. I, I was yeah when I did the second time, I I was a little lower, but yeah. I also had a 
issue with my calf. Okay. I didn't want it. So you were the one that uh, first uh, uh, yeah. took it down a little bit. So, so it was actually fairly easy, but you know, my calf was bothering me throughout the whole thing. Yeah. But I was able to do it, and get, it felt really good afterwards. But I was fascinated the way you know it would give you a little warning, you know, it's going to go to whatever the next pace was. Yeah, no, And you needed the instructor, but he would tell you that's going to be on for 90 minutes or 90 seconds, I should say. Yeah. Not 90 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was really cool. You were the instructor. It was really cool seeing yeah. you there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was good. It was always good to have an Olympian guide you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. Excellent, excellent. And the electronics are built in. And, uh, and you have your own um, personal website, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, is cloud-based so that when you go home, you, it'll tell you how many miles you did. Yeah, it, it, it shows off it, their, their, their pace, their, their average pace, their total pace they've covered, their total mileage. I right, mean, right, and it's cumulative. Speed, so what is this? And it's cumulative, and it's in the website. So, um, yeah, that's, so, they can so see the measurements. So if you have a goal of doing 50 miles or whatever it is, you can catch it. Uh, oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And it just shows the measurements. And when, when you find that you can actually handle the workout with a particular normal running pace. I mean, they're nice, strong workouts. Yeah. It's like, wow, that was awesome. And your body adapts to that really quick. So that if you went and did that exact workout again, which we never do, we change the workout every day, but you would, it'd be so much easier. Yeah, Muscle stress adaptation is really quick. Yeah. But you also offer the velocity and, and endurance. endurance. What, is, what is velocity? Um, velocity is like a 45 minute interval class. So first we've got the shaper, which is 30 minutes of intervals and then 15 minutes of exercises. Strength exercises like lunges and what, and actually in those 30 minutes of, of intervals, we also do form drills, like running drills to help improve your form and some dynamic stretches as part of the warm up. It's like an eight or nine minutes before you get into the system using your pins. Um, and the velocity is exactly the same, that kind of warm up, but it goes for 45 minutes, um, right all the way to the 45 minutes of intervals. We only have a couple of endurances right now, but we will get it, and that's a 55 minute workout where you can have more tempos, it's more, yeah, marathon, a bit more marathon based okay. training. We've also got like a stroll to stride that we would like to introduce, um, which is taking someone who's actually never run before and then putting them on and, and making them run 5K with eight or nine week, in eight or nine weeks, okay. where they come three days a week on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. That's something we want to introduce when we get enough people call, calling us up and saying, yeah, I want, I want to hear about uh, wanna, this class. Wanna but, a 5K so, program. Yeah. But some of it will probably also involve outdoor running. You can't do it all entirely in the treadmill. Yeah, but our concept's all indoors. Okay. So yeah, outdoor, like if we do a training program for the marathon, that's going to be in outdoor running included that they go and do. And, and then enjoy they the Henwood Hounds on a Saturday. Yeah, you know? exactly. <laughs> for some reason, just the last few months, everybody's doing treadmill running. I was doing a lot at Nike Town. Nike Town set up five woodways right in their lobby. I've seen a picture of it, yeah. Oh, a friend of mine told me about it, so I signed up, by the way, because it was a promotion, you know, just yep. come. And they were very serious. I mean, the, the Nike Town coaches were yeah. serious coaches, and we did a serious 15-minute. Yeah, yeah. And it had that big screen, so you could see a, a beautiful yeah. Arizona, Hawaii. They even had a hill, so when you're doing uphill, you could see the little. It's, <laughs> it's the new thing. Everyone's, I mean, the running treadmill concept, I mean, it's been, my, I've been on it for about three years, but we knew it was going to come and be big. I loved it so much, particularly they gave you a free shirt. It's like, okay, great. I think I went three times in a row, you know, yep, the, yep. because they, they, they offered it like six times a day. Mm -hmm. And the person said, oh, great, you like it, yeah. And she said, oh, you know, she only be doing this twice a week. You know, this is considered speed work. And I yeah. gave that some thought. So, so I'm going to ask you, you know, how often should, should you, you go to, to the, the treadmill? If you're a, a really fast runner, going twice a week is fine. Okay. Um, kind of in the middle ground, uh, you know, like I say, more um, an eight to 10 minute miler. You, I mean, you can go three times or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And then people that are just trying to get back in shape, which is me, little beginners, I mean, five times, you know. Yeah. If you find that you're just not recovered because you went the day before, yeah. um, you know, just take it easy. You can always set it on manual. Yeah, Some people yeah. just love the camaraderie of just people being in the, and just the music and everything else. We have two choices. You can hit the program or you can just hit manual and just run along yeah, yeah. And, have, and have fun. Yeah, yeah. well, so. I wish you a great success on that. Uh, yeah, thank you. It'll catch on. I mean, uh, there's a 
Yeah. Everybody, all, even Equinox has a studio for treadmills. Yeah. But yeah. I haven't been to that one. Yeah. But there's different locations. The difference is we, they don't have the music. And I think oh, it's all okay. to me. It's oh, okay. all about the music. The music is important. It is. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, we're almost out of time. So I wanted to cover some of your personal future challenges in terms of racing. Do you have a, a destination run that you do for yourself? It's all about the business right now. I've been there, done that for so long. I've ran since I was a kid. Or you're racing us recreational. And it's recreational in terms of right now. Helping your team. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And so, what do you see as the, for your for your team, the Headwood Hounds, or the run? What what anything exciting coming in either way, either one? Um, well, the run is just about getting people in and building it in, and possibly a, a New York uh, marathon training program would be really good where they come to the run twice a week within a, you know, like a from July 1st right through to the New York Marathon, or even if they just come for 12 weeks. Um, so we're going to work on that right now. And, um, with, yeah, I think that's an exciting package within the run. As for my own team, they know I stepped aside a little bit where I have another guy, Tony Scott. Oh, okay. Yeah, who's awesome guy, running lots of PRs, just really doing really well. So I still write the programs and give the workouts, but I give them to him and he does them on a Tuesday. But I'm there back there on a Saturday morning. So okay. we've got two workouts. I'm there on a Saturday morning. He's there on a Tuesday. Saturday morning's being the Central Park with the, uh, yeah, yeah. the team. Yeah, oh, It's important right. to keep you, that you team going. You've got two jobs now. You've got the coaching and the, the run. Well, it's all the run, really. It's, it's the, run. the you got to get that off the ground. Like, yeah, exactly. This Saturday, I just go there just to see the team on a Saturday morning early for that second workout. Okay. Thank you for coming in. No. Okay. We got it. Awesome. Thank you. Cool.